Welcome to Three Skulls Tavern, a channel devoted to tabletop role-playing games by Free League Publishing. This show is sponsored by Worldmill, online server hosting for the Foundry Virtual Tabletop. To support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt K. For a minimum of $2 per month, you get access to a ton of extra content. Hi, welcome back to Forbidden Lands, my solo campaign here on Three Skulls Tavern. I'm your host, Matt. And we're going to jump straight in from where we left off in the previous episode. There is one little thing I wanted to, to discuss before I do, though, and that is um, experience points. Now, I'm not going to award experience points just yet, but it is something I have forgotten about in the uh, with all the fun I've been having. Um, normally, with Forbidden Lands, you gain experience points after sessions, after a session's been complete. Now, a session normally would run for something like two to four ish hours and I've been thinking that I will probably be looking to award um, experience points during appropriate downtime milestones in the story around about every four to six episodes now this seems like a really good point coming up I'm um, Yubi and I have just been taken prisoner by these dwarves um, there's going to be a lot of downtime potentially, so this is a good place where I can, um, you know, I can reward my award my PC some experience points. Uh, but I also like to wait until there's a moment where, if I'm taking anything like a skill or a talent, etc., I like to try and tie it into the narrative somehow, rather than doing the D and D style, you know, ping in the middle of combat. I've hit the right number of experience points, or just after combat, and suddenly I'm better at something unrelated. So I'll talk about all that a little bit later. Um, I just wanted to mention it, uh, just so people are aware, I haven't forgotten about it. And because of the nature of these 30-minute episodes, it can be a little bit weird with, um, you know, what constitutes a session where experience points are concerned. So all that's going to be addressed, possibly in this episode, maybe in another episode in the future. So, we left off in the previous session, as I'm sure most of you will remember, with Yubi and Udo traveling into a new hex, finding out that there was an adventure site in there, Yubi failing her scouting role and uh, her keep watch like scouting role, and therefore not spotting the adventure site before the adventure site denizens or occupants spotted us. And when we ran on, I rolled on the oracles, um, rolled on the random generator for the castle, it turned out that there was a bucket full of dwarves. Bucket full? There were a lot of dwarves in, <laughs> in this uh, adventure site, which turns out to be in um, a castle, like a ruined castle, a ruined mansion. And uh, if I remember correctly, there were 17 dwarves. And basically, the, they took us prisoner. I tried manipulating them. The manipulation failed. They didn't believe me. And therefore, they took us prisoner. It might seem a little harsh, but um, I kind of like the narrative tension that this presents. I like how this is not this is breaking up the regular travel with something else that's going on. So um, I've been thinking in between that previous session and recording this one about how I want to proceed with the narrative, whether I want to just kind of hand wave it and they do some questioning, we role play some questioning, and then they let us go on their way when they realize we're not a threat. Um, or whether it's something a little bit more insidi insidious. Um, and rather than trying to trying to just make that decision on my own, this is a solo game, and it makes sense to ask the Oracle. So, I'm going to start this session by asking the Oracle a, 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 a very specific question, and that question is, are these dwarves honorable? So, we're going to go over into Foundry. Um, as you can see here, I have another panel of macros that I've added to the the one at the bottom. That's a module called um, Custom Hotbar. Yeah, so that just gives me an extra set of slots here that stick over the, the previous one. Yeah, I've also just done a little bit of tweaking. Um, you know, you can see that there's different icons here to mark my trail as I'm going. They're a little bit, um, they blend in a little bit better with the map. So I kind of like them a bit better, and I've added icons specifically to each of these, um, you know, encounters that have come up. Um, I'll be doing that in between sessions rather than trying to waste time in a session to try and find something, you know, um, suitable to, to drop down. Anyway, here we are in Deep Mark. 
So the oracle I'm going to ask, I've already asked, I'm asking the question of the oracle now, um, are the dwarves honorable? And we need to go to the yes, no oracle, which is somewhere. Ah, yeah, <laughs> this dice roller thing here. So it's the six, six base dice. Let's give them a roll. And we've got a single six. Now, if we look at what the oracle says about that, go over here, down at the bottom here, it means yes, but. Um, now, it says encounter oracle, but this is effectively the same, the same yes, no oracle that's used for everything. So there's a yes, but here. So, yes, they're honorable dwarves, but they're suspicious. They're suspicious of a halfling and a goblin, which aren't generally seen adventuring together in the Ravenlands, um, being suddenly together and coming to their coming to their hideout here. So they put us into the dungeons of this castle, and they're suspicious. So they're not going to just question us and let us go on their way. Um, they're going to try and figure out exactly what's going on. I've already tried explaining it to them. I've explained about. Um, you know what our purposes are. I've asked. I've said. Asked if they wanted to trade with us. They've taken our stuff. I, I've already decided that previously in the previous session. So they've got our equipment, and they're going to split Yubi and I up and put us into different cells. This being a castle uh, only occupied by these seventeen dwarves, that means that there's going to be plenty of empty <laughs> cells in the dungeon. So they put us in two very separate ones that are far enough away that if we wanted to talk to each other, perhaps we would have to shout. And Yubi isn't talking to me again, even though she said that no before. So I know that she can talk now, but um, she hasn't really said anything since. So, we're separated. And I think I'm going to... Yeah, I think I might move the clock along a little ways. Um, I'll do this. I'm not sure if there's an easy way to do it here, but I want to actually move the clock along a number of days um, while they go through rounds of questioning me and questioning Yubi, asking us the same questions, different dwarves questioning us, because I've said that they're suspicious, right? We're in this castle that is surrounded by mushrooms, so there's no shortage of food to be had, and that's exactly what they're feeding us. They're feeding us I guess mushroom gruel, mushroom stew, that sort of thing. It's basically just mushrooms boiled with water and with some woodland uh, herb seasoning added to it. So it might taste quite nice the first one or two times we've had it, but when that's all we're eating, that's all they're feeding us. Um, you know, we're kind of, at the time a few days go past, we're, we're absolutely sick of this mushroom stew. So we've been, we've been here for a while and I want to say that they, they have been questioning us first about what we're doing here. Then they're asking, some of, those, some of them have asked us some very specific questions. And those very specific questions, um, this is something I did do a little bit of prep before um, about. I went to the Discord for the Year Zero uh, world server, which is all about the Year Zero engine. And I asked for some GM um, brainstorming ideas about why these dwarves might be down here. There, this isn't really dwarf territory or anywhere near any dwarf territory um, and why they would be suspicious and of, of strangers. So I wasn't really spoiling the story for people who hadn't watched it yet, but wanted some ideas for that. And there's some good ideas bouncing back. And one of them that I really like that I'm going to be running with is that these dwarves are following, are chasing after a legend. The legend of a, of an artifact, in fact. I don't know which artifact it is that they're chasing. But I'm going to roll for it. So I actually have here a um, a macro for an artifact. So I'm going to click that. Come over here and have a look at what it says. And it says Bark Hide. Now, I'm not going to click on that to see what it means because that is... I don't... I kind of remember what that is from my read-through as a GM of the game, but I've... I've forgotten exactly what it is. I know what it looks like, the image. I don't exactly know what it does. But um, Udo certainly has no idea what Bark Hide is. But these dwarves, while they're questioning Udo, he doesn't know what's happening with Yubi yet, but while they're questioning Udo, they mention several times Bark Hide. And they ask what Udo knows of Bark Hide. And 
I'm again, I'm moving into third person here. I think I need to move into first person a little bit. So as they're asking me about Barkhide, I'm I am constantly, you know, singing my innocence. I've never heard this word before. I have no idea what that is. I'm 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 just off to seek my own my own adventures and to to head north towards these marshlands. I sing like a canary. Maybe after being in there for a day, maybe an hour, um, just to try me desperately. Like, I don't want to be in a dungeon. Um, so please let me out. And eating this this mushroom stew constantly. So Barkhide, that's the one thing. The second thing that they they keep mentioning is a name. And for this, I'm going to roll my NPC generator. Uh, in fact, I'm not. I'm going to roll on a table. You won't be able to see it from the drop-down menu here. Um, but there's a drop-down menu for names. And I'm going to pick a very specific name here, Wolfkin name. Click roll. And the roll we get is Elir. So they're asking about Elir as well. Have I heard of... Do I, do I know anyone named Elir? Do I know a wolfkin named Elir? And again, I have no idea who this is. But these are important. These are two important things that are going to be added to uh, my journal. And yeah, we'll see what happens with them. So if I come over here to my journal in Foundry, I've not been using this. I have something at the bottom uh, called Quest Log. This is actually a, um, a module that you can add. And you can actually add quests to it to keep track of. So I already have one called the Robber Chieftain's Horde. If I click on that, I've pasted in the screenshot of it. I've put a summary of it. Uh, there are objectives you can add, rewards you can add, whether it's in progress, you can add images, all that kind of stuff. I've only just put the bare minimum of that in there for it at the moment. But I'm going to add a new quest. And the quest is going to be called... Um, quest title is going to be called Elir. Is that with two L's or one L? Looks like one L. Elir and Barkhide. And I'm just gonna very quickly write in here. The dwarves in Deepmark have questioned me about a wolfkin named Elir and some and something they clearly want called Barkhide. What could this mean? Okay, so I've just added in here a quick description for this quest. Uh, we hit here add to quest log, and it's in there. So, there's a little bit of information I've received, but they're not letting you be or myself go. They're still suspicious. They don't want to. They don't want us to be let free, and then to warn maybe people that they're worried about. Um, but they're still staying in this in this castle. It seems like they're waiting for somebody potentially. And we're in here for a number of days. We'll say we're in here for about a week. So we're currently on the 37th of Falwain. I'm going to advance the clock now, and it'll be a week later, seven days later. Okay, so I've advanced the clock to seven days later. It's now the 44th of Falwain, which is getting quite late in the month. Um, dawn is breaking on this date. Um, it's starting to get a little bit chillier. I, I'm kind of dread looking at what this is going to say for the weather because it says 21 degrees, which is not chilly at all. Um, but we're nearly in the winter. Like when it when this month ends and the new win the new month starts, it's the start of winter. So it should really be a you know from um, early morning in autumn, it should be pretty pretty cold. Um, so we'll look at that 21 degrees and maybe we'll drop about 10 degrees off of it and say it's more like 11, 12 degrees this morning. Um, and they haven't questioned me for a few days now, which is a little bit unusual. Um, and at some point, one of the dwarves comes into, in, down into the, uh, the dungeon. It's a blonde dwarf who has a hammer. And he kind of looks at me in my cell. And I'm expecting him to, to be bringing me food because it's kind of morning. And in fact, he does have a bowl of mushroom stew with him. He opens the cell door, places the mushroom stew on the floor next to me, or in the, I guess, yeah, like near me. And then he drops an iron file, boing, on the floor at my feet. And he walks back over to the door of the cell, leaves it open, and says, we're off, lads. No hard feelings, but we still don't trust you or your friend. Uh, so this is to give us a bit of a head start. We've left your gear outside, just there on a table. And uh, 
don't worry, it's all there. We're not thieves. Good luck with your quest, and uh, don't come looking after us, alright? Gives me a wink, and then he disappears. I'm not sure I mentioned it earlier, but I have a manacle, uh, like a, an iron manacle around my ankle attached to the wall. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I can hear the dwarves making ready to leave and I start filing away at my chains. As I do, and I take a few breaks every now and again, I can hear the same sound coming from somewhere else in the dungeon. And I assume Yubi has been also given um, a file to file through her chain. So the question is now how long it takes to get out of these. And for that, I'm going to assume it's going to take one quarter day. So it's going to take us to noon to break out. But I'm going to actually roll for this. I'm going to roll... For both myself and for Yubi, and we're going to roll Might. Now, arguably this could be a crafting roll, but it doesn't really matter because I don't have any skill points, and neither does Yubi, in either Might or Crafting. So really it's just a Strength roll. So in fact, I'll just roll Strength. Um, and there is... I am actually going to add one gear, one gear dice to this. And I'm just going to see if it, if we can break through. The, the skill roll is to see if we break through in the current um, quarter day. And if we get more, if one of us gets more than one success, then we do it, say, halfway through the quarter day. So within like a few hours rather than taking six hours to do it. Um, and let's roll. So strength for Udo plus one gear die. We're going to roll. And I'm going to say we can probably, um, because this is a roll that t is normally going to take a quarter day, I'm not going to allow pushing for this because we're already trying to push as hard as we can. So I'm just going to roll like that. And look at that. Three sixes. Incredible. Incredible. So, yeah. Udo's doing quite well here. We're going to do the same for Yubi and see if she can actually somehow beat that. I doubt it, sincerely. In fact, she's got none. So... I'm not sure what's happening with Yubi there, but maybe tie this into the narrative somehow. But Udo manages to file through like a boss, through this, the chain of his manacle, through his. I keep switching the third person. I file through the chain of my manacle that's around my leg, and I manage to get it off in not just half of a, of a quarter, in just an hour, in fact. So it's gone, it's gone to 8 a.m. Um, actually, I think dawn. Normally, I want dawn to be 6 a.m. I'm not going to worry about it too much because uh, I don't want to faff around with this too much. I also have this uh, this clock here. I've moved it so I don't have to scroll around so much within Foundry. So I'm actually going to move this clock from being uh, dawn here to being just a little bit past dawn like that. I mean, I, I, this is just to capture shifts. It doesn't really matter too much. I guess I can just move it into the daytime shift to say that's where we are. Um, noon being when we get to this point at the bottom here. So, in very, very little time, in only an hour, I managed to get the manacle filed off. And I drop the iron, um, I drop the iron file, I pick up my bowl of stew, because I, I was just first trying to get through this to see if I could do it quickly, and I did. So I haven't had my breakfast yet. Um, I also don't really fancy having... Uh, mushroom stew for breakfast if I don't have to. I'm thinking of the rations that, uh, the food rations that we had in our pack, hoping they're still there because I really fancy something else. Um, you know, and hobbits, halflings I should say, uh, are always thinking about food. So I carry my bowl of stew carefully because I don't want to lose it if I need it um, out of the cell. And I can see um, that there is a uh, torch that has been left burning even though it's um, it's daytime, there's not a lot of light that comes that comes down here into the dungeons. And there's a table just under the torch. And on this table are both mine and um, Yubi's packs. So I, I kind of rush over to them. I put my bowl of stew on the floor, uh, on the table, I should say. And the first thing I notice is that there's also a key on the table. And it's a much smaller key than the one that would fit in the lock for my cell door. And I think, uh, this must be the key for my manacle. And sure enough, when I try it, the the um, manacle that's still attached to my leg, because remember I just took the, the chain off, 
um, unlocks and falls off. So I'm not gonna be walking around with the, you know, the end of a manacle um, strapped to my leg, an iron uh, anklet, so to speak. Um, I then rush, I think I just assume everything's in our packs and I rush to help Yubi as well. And I look in each of the cells, I find Yubi and say, oh, we've done it, we're free. They've let us, they're letting us go. Did they say something to you? And she stops, she stops kind of the filing she's been doing in her, at her chain and she looks up at me and nods. Um, and I rush over to her with a key and I undo the manacle around her foot and say, all right, then they're letting us go. This is great. We can continue on our way. I don't, I don't know which direction they were going, but um, I could hear their voices outside. I think they said that they were heading um, south, maybe southwest. So not the direction we're going anyway. So this, this is good. Um, our packs are outside. Let's go have a look. And we both head over to the table, open our packs, and... Hmm... Do I want to ask the Oracle? Let's ask the Oracle. <laughs> Oracle, is all of our stuff there? Yes, but. Yes, but there's the possibility that there's been some spoilage of our food because it's been a week, right? So we're gonna make two rolls on our food rations to see if, um, if, if they're still good or if they've um, gone down a little bit. So I'm gonna roll food twice for myself. First one, I roll a one or a two, it goes down. Okay, my food, my, all of my food is spoiled. D6 is the lowest it can go. I can't change it here, so I'll have to open the character sheet in a second. Now we're gonna roll for Yubi's. First roll is a three, so that's okay. Second roll is a seven. So um, Yubi's rations are absolutely fine for some, maybe she has different rations because she's a goblin and I'm a halfling and we packed different rations when we got started. Um, and Yubi, I kind of, I kind of let out this kind of cry of, of despair when I realized that my, my rations have spoiled, and I kind of, I kind of throw them on the ground in disgust, and, and I say, I was so looking forward to eating something other than those, those disgusting mushrooms, and just typically, they're, they're spoiled. What are yours like, Yubi? She kind of looks at me, gives me a kind of a level stare, and then shrugs and shows me, opens up maybe like a little leaf packet or something, and it's like lembus bread or something, um, more more goblin-y. Um, but it's like a nut, like a nut bread type of thing, and, um, you know, sweetened with honey or something. And um, she takes a little nibble on one, shrugs, and hands it over to me. And I'm gonna tuck into it, so uh, we're gonna roll food for her again, this is me eating from her rations to see if I how much I eat. <laughs> One. So I greedily gobble down um, <laughs> quite a bit of her rations. So she's down to a D6. Um, Yubi realizes this and kind of like snatches it back, but a bit too late. And like half of what she had left is gone. Um, and she decides that she's going to save these rations. She's a bit more practical um, about this. And uh, she she takes her bowl of mushroom stew and she kind of lifts the bowl to her lips and she drinks from it. So I'm gonna open the actual character sheets rather than in the GM screen and we're gonna lower the food by one die for Yubi and we're going to take away all of my food because it had spoiled for Udo. Okay, we put our packs on and I will say like another hour has gone by while, while all this is happening. So we're kind of halfway through the halfway through the shift, halfway through the quarter day, halfway through the morning, and we decide to keep pressing on. Um, we're both we've both eaten. We're near a lake. I think it's safe to say that. In fact, we're going to spend the rest of the quarter day just making sure that everything is is kind of ready to go. That we've filled our canteens. We have a little look to find some water, but we're near a lake. Um, so I think I'm not going to worry with a foraging roll on this one just just for now. Um, I mean, the, the lake water could be not possible theoretically, but I don't want to roll for it. I feel like it's too much rolling. So we're just going to assume that we've got full water rations at least. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to quickly open these. They're already here. You can see water is at D12, which is maximum for both of us. So I don't need to change any of that. Um, there's plenty of mushrooms here, so we could theoretically stay here if we wanted to. Um, to, you know, 
to let another day go by, but it's I don't see the need for that. It's we're still in the morning shift. We've both eaten, we've slept, we've had some water to drink. So in terms of like our conditions, we're not sleepy, we're not hungry, we're not cold, anything like that. Um, our packs are with us. We've got everything that we that we had when we got captured, um, and we're ready to keep going. So. Before I do, I just want to talk about experience points because I, this is, I think, a point where it would be worth stopping very quickly and talking experience. In the book, there are a number of questions that, that are asked and very quickly, um, for each of these questions, if you can answer yes, you get one experience point. So I've been through that list previous, like in between sessions, and I'll just say the, the ones that I'll be getting an experience point for and I'll ignore the rest for now. Um, one is for if you've attended the session, you get one XP. So just for just for playing, you get one. So I'm giving myself one for that. If you've traveled through at least one new hex, you get an XP. We've definitely done that, so we're going to get one there. And if you've discovered an adventure site, you get an XP as well. And this is technically an adventure site. We've rolled for an, a random adventure site. And just because it's not full of um, monsters or anything else, that doesn't really change the fact that it's still an adventure site. So that's three XP and nothing else that that triggers has happened. So we're going to keep it at the three XP and um, I'm going to give that to um, both of us actually, because I haven't, I, I can't do it here again, <laughs> unfortunately. So there's, there's limited of um, limited things we can do with uh, with a GM screen. But anyway, so we've got three XP now. You might be wondering why I'm spending so much time on Yubi. This is something else I wanted to talk about very quickly. Uh, Yubi is my sidekick, and I wanted her to be the sidekick and not to focus on her too much, but I have kept an entire character sheet for her. Um, I'm having her roll full combat rounds, and I've, I'm tracking her equipment, all the rest of it. I could simplify this down quite a bit, but one thing I really liked was that in this castle, this ruined castle that we were just in, if the Oracle had said that these dwarves were not honorable, it's possible that Yubi and I would have been split. And one of the ways that that could have happened could be that I would no longer be controlling Udo and I might be controlling Yubi from here on out. And I like the f I like having that option available to me. If one of us dies, if, y if Udo dies, this campaign can still go on with Yubi. And whether Yubi decides to keep pursuing Udo's quest or she decides to do something else is will be up to her and up to how I feel about that. But I, I kind of like having that option available. And therefore, I'm kind of playing with two PCs rather than just one with a sidekick. Although in reality, I'm kind of role playing it like Yubi is a sidekick, but I'm still keeping the focus on her having a full character sheet. So I just wanted to mention that in case people were wondering about it. Um, that's how I'm doing it. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up this camp this um, this episode fairly soon. I just wanted to move into at least one new session before we did, um, and we want to keep moving north here. So we move north from here. We follow the edge of the lake and we move one um, one hex north over here. And before we do, we're doing the usual step. The first thing is a lead the way roll, and that's a survival roll and it's going to be me again. The reason it's me is because there also has to be a um, keep watch role, which is a scouting role, and Yubi is much better at scouting than she is at survival. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be rolling for survival. Our empathy, by the way, has healed, so I can actually take, uh, take this off. Okay, I just wanted to check how Empathy recovers because I've been looking at some, a lot of the other Year Zero Engine games lately and they all handle it slightly differently. And in Forbidden Lands here, uh, assuming that you're not broken, which you aren't, all you have to do is you have to um, have slept or rested for at least a quarter day. Assuming you're not hungry, thirsty, or suffering from another condition that blocks recovery, you gain back all of your attribute points. Um, so our Empathy will just be recovered in that way. So in fact, we don't need to do anything special um, and the empathy can be back. It makes sense for empathy to be a little bit down because we're probably a bit grumpy about things, but we're gonna leave it as it is um, and gonna make some rolls now. So I'm rolling for survival to see if we find a mishap while I'm walking through, um, as I'm leading the way through into this next hex. <laughs> well, we've got a mishap. We have a mishap, so I'm clicking on journal, uh, journeying mishaps, lead the way, and let's see what we've got. 
Blocked terrain. Interesting. The way forward is blocked by rocks, fallen trees, thick shrubbery, or flooding. I think flooding probably makes a bit of sense here. Um, although we were in a dungeon, so if it had been raining in a, in a neighboring hex and flooded, we'd probably be in some, uh, you know, we'd probably have not have slept very well um, and probably be a bit sick or something. So some something else is blocking our train. We're in a forest, so maybe it's a, a mixture of like fallen trees and th thick shrubbery. Um, and we just can't get past it somehow. We looked about going, you know, going around with the lake, but maybe maybe there's like a cliff, a cliff edge around here as well, where it's just not easy to get down without falling directly into what looks like a fairly deep part of the lake. And we don't want to risk losing any of, any of our equipment. So we have to roll might or move to be able to move forward. I'm going to be rolling for this on my own, and I'll get UB to give me a, a point of like assistance dice for it. But let's see if we can get through this, this shrubbery and this... Um, you know, this these trees and shrubbery that are blo blo eh, blocking our path. So if I look here at uh, might, I don't have much in the way of might, and in terms of move, I also don't have much in the way of move. Um, Yubi does, however. So if, if I find this spot, um, Yubi can roll for agility for her move, and I can assist her, and that's probably the best way to do it. So maybe she's trying to climb um, up, like, over some of these fallen trees, and she's, like, helping me kind of climb over them. And we'll see if that's, that's if we're able to do that. So we're going to roll, click for move for her. We're going to add one mod, a plus one modifier for my help and see what, we, see what we get. And there's no success there, but she can push it. Now, I don't want to push it because it's agility. She's an archer, and I think it's important... Um, in case we come up against somebody uh, soon that, yeah, that uh, we're not too damaged. Also, we're, yeah, anyway, so the way is blocked. We're not able to get through. I'm not rolling again to see if we can try something else. We're just going to treat it like that. We can't get past. If we fail, we suffer one point of damage to strength and must roll again. Must roll again. Anyone who rolls successfully can help anyone who did not. Okay, so I did that a bit wrong. You won't make any progress on the map during this quarter day. So we basically have to keep rolling until we get through. Um, right, so I think she can't quite do it. So I think um, we're both going to take a, a point of damage to our strength. So let's do that first. Um, it's not going to be good for Might, is it? In fact, Yubi's not looking too good right now. Um, so I'm going to try next. And again, I shouldn't have taken the help die necessarily. So I'm going to roll for myself to see how well I do um, with moving over these over these uh, trees. And I get two successes. So I, I managed to get over. I managed to kind of somehow climb where Yubi wasn't able to. I find, I find a gap or something I'm kind of able to squeeze through. And now I can help her with her next one to roll through. So we're going to open again. We're going to roll for Yubi's agility. And we're going to give her one help from me now as it should have done the first time. And she's got two successes as well. So, we've spent the entire quarter day, instead of just like half a quarter day for this. Um, I will, we won't make any progress on the map during this quarter day. So I think it's fair to say we're stuck in this for the entire day. Um, so we're going to just progress this to... Um, it would have progressed first to noon. And then we're in that full afternoon, or this, this full daytime um, se segment and into the evening now. Um, Hold on, this is dawn, so we should have been here. We were in the morning, we're now here, um, and we've wasted this whole thing. So it's now like 6 p.m., basically. Uh, so we've just kind of progressed this to 6 p.m., and that's that's kind of how it's gone. Okay, so here we are. We're in this, um, we've, we've made it through this blockade. It's taken us a long time to get through for this hex. Um, but the one thing we haven't asked is, is there an encounter in this hex? So I'm gonna quickly. We're gonna end it. We're gonna end the session while we're figuring out if there is something here. Um, if there is, we're gonna see what the nature of that is, whether we spot it in time, and then we'll we'll end the session and, and do the next one after. So is there something in this test? Do we encounter anything? Four sixes. So we absolutely. I mean, that's again a huge roll. Yes, and we get we spot it with plenty of time, and I think with four successes. We're definitely going to get a plus two to the keep watch on Yubi's part to see what we spot. First, we're going to roll um, to see what kind of encounter we, we come across. So to do that, I come over here to the, the random encounters. We're in the normal forest at the moment, so we click on that. And before I look at it, I'm going to roll for Yubi's um, spots, uh, sorry, for Yubi's scouting roll. 
So Yubi gets to roll scouting, which is she's got a skill of two in it, and she gets a plus two because we got we did so well with that oracle roll. And she's got two sixes there. No need to. I mean, we we don't push these anyway. Or I don't push these generally anyway. So we're get, definitely going to be able to spot this threat if it's a threat, or spot whatever it is before it spots us. And the encounter is the fox. I'll open it very quickly and just um, narrate what it says. And then we're going to end the session. A strange song echoes over the land. A growly male voice sings of purple flowers and deep tombs where heaven and earth meet. You have never heard a song such as this before. As you pass a turn in the road, you suddenly find yourselves eye to eye with a small fox. It stares at you with large eyes. The song has ended. And I happen to know <laughs> we had the same encounter in our Forbidden Lands uh, campaign on this channel uh, that I ran last year. So I know exactly what um, what this fox entails, but um, I'm gonna try and maybe make this no. We're so I know what it, I know. I know personally what's going to happen, um, but it's uh, we'll we'll figure out next session exactly what happens with this fox, and yeah, we'll end it here. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, if you can hit the subscribe and like button down below, it helps the channel to grow. If you want to reach out to me on social media, you can find all the links in the little ticker here at the bottom of the screen, um, or there are hyperlinks in the description below. Uh, if you like this uh, campaign, it'd be nice to to hear that like what your thoughts are on it. Um, feel free to leave some comments and uh, let me know what you think. If you've got any kind of interesting ideas about how this can evolve or where it, maybe a way the story can develop or uh, maybe there's some solo techniques or tools that I absolutely should be using that I don't know about, I'd love to hear all of that. Again, either reach out on social media or drop them in the comments. That'd be great. Other than that, thanks very much and catch you next week.